our quest for renewal has brought some to the brink of death. Ironically, not quite back again. Rebirth. It's the key moment in the world's largest religion. Hope for a new beginning envelops our literature, our media, and our minds. Maybe we can start again. Listening to the Mind the Gap podcast, bridging the gap between your minds and everything else. I'm Keegan Gwidlin. And I'm Mackie Drew. And our show today is called Phoenix and Futurama. And this is our show about rebirth and resurrection, which is, I think, quite apt for our uh, season finale. Oh, yeah, season finale. Mm -hmm. Ten episodes already. Indeed. Don't worry, we'll take a week off, but we'll be back after that. Is it just a week? Yep. Oh, okay. Normally it's, a, it's three. But this 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 season, it's one. Oh, okay. Ideal with a schedule, you see. <laughs> I see. All right. All right. Um, so I'd like to start off by talking about religious reincarnation, which is probably the most, uh, the first thing you think of when you think about, you know, rebirth and resurrection. Yeah. And religious reincarnation is a common theme, both from the standpoint of resurrection of the dead and from the standpoint of an afterlife. Uh, Christianity's claim to fame is Jesus' resurrection, obviously. The entire religion is based on the idea that Jesus sort of triumphed over death by be being resurrected from the dead. Uh, but this is common in a lot of religions, so other less-known deities in dead religions often carried this theme of resurrection. Uh, you know, we're talking about Osiris, an Egyptian god. Uh, Baal, a Canaanite god. Uh, Baal is also a Christian god, but you don't hear about him much. Right. That's <laughs> way too much Sorry. to talk about now. Oh, boy. We better not. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Malkart, who is the Phoenician guardian god of the city Tyre. Makes sense. Uh, Adonis, who is a Greek god. Eshman, uh, another Phoenician guardian god, this time of a city called Sidon. Uh, Dum uh, Dumuzi who is a Mesopotamian god, uh, Asclepius, a Greek god who is, um, he's the symbol for medicine. He was, he died as a mortal and was reborn as a god, uh, resurrected as a god. Achilles, Memnon, Al... Wait, wait, wait. wait. Mm -hmm. Achilles was resurrected? I thought he was just, like, invincible. Nope, he was resurrected after he was killed with the Achilles heel. Awesome. All right, carry on. Sorry uh, about that. <laughs> Memnon, Alcmene, Castor, Heracles, Mer uh, Melisertes, all Greek. Uh, so there's a lot of this in Greek history. In fact, Greek histories indicate that indicate the belief that the sage Aristeus of Proconesus was found dead, his body vanished from a locked room, and then he was resurrected immortal. Very similar to the uh, Christian tale of Jesus dying on the cross, being put in the, you know, uh, the cave with the boulder in front, vanishing from that cave, and then resurrecting later on. Uh, so there's a lot of common themes with reincarnation and resurrection in religions. Most commonly, reincarnation refers to the religious concept that after death, the soul is put into a new body for a new life. And this could be human or non-human based on the morality of the life lived. Uh, this is the central tenet of many Indian religions, so Hinduism, Jainism, Buddhism, Sikhism. Uh, so this often takes the form of people claiming to remember past life. You know, this has totally gone away from the Indian religions, and it's now just people will claim to remember past lives. It sort of entered the public mythos. Everyone just claims it. Uh, and so a psychiatrist named e Ian Stevenson from the University of Virginia investigated reports of children who claimed to remember a past life. 
He documented over 2,500 case studies over 40 years. Uh, and when he was doing these case studies, he would document the children's statements, and then he would try to identify the deceased individual using the descriptions the children gave, and then tried to verify the children's stories. He tried to match birthmarks, birth defects, wounds, scars, stuff like that, you know. And he, through this research, he attempted to support reincarnation. Although skeptics noted that the vast majority of cases were found in Eastern societies where people believe in reincarnation, and that all these reports are anecdotal as opposed to empirical, and that Stevenson was selectively reporting the cases that confirmed his preferred result, which is a form of bias called confirmation bias. Yes. Um, the other thing to think about when we're talking about reincarnation is that, you know, and rebirth is that a lot of religions will you have a concept of reincarnation even if you believe in an afterlife of any kind if a christian believes they're going to heaven that's a you know sort of a rebirth as a spiritual form so this is a very very common theme throughout spiritualism and um religion in general but maybe the most fun and famous uh currently form of rebirth that's emerged in popular culture today is the resurrection of the dead in the form of zombies. Mm. Yeah, I didn't thought of that as rebirth. It's kind of like resurrection. rebirth is someone else, though, isn't it? Well, originally zombies were dead people resurrected and controlled by a wizard in uh, uh, the West African society called, or West, West African religion called Vodun, uh, Haitian voodoo, and New Orleans voodoo. Uh, and so that's literally, you know, a person dies and they're resurrected as that person, but they're controlled. So it's not the sort of mindless creatures we think of today. But now they compose a huge subgenre of horror, which employs, you know, the, uh, they have the zombies that are slow and sort of decomposing as they walk and all that stuff. Before they were actually resurrected, they were live people. You wouldn't necessarily know that they oh. were. I had no idea that that was the case. Yeah. I always assumed it was a, a serious, you know, always rotting, always no, it grave was, ridden. <laughs> yeah. That's a very modern reinvention. And, you know, the modern reinventions usually use a viral infection as the cause of the zombieism as opposed to, you know, a wizard. Yeah. More recently, fungus and there's uh, parasites and, you know, you name it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's sort of my intro to resurrection and reincarnation. Uh, yeah, yeah what just the got? basic rundown of the that kind of stuff. Yeah. Now, I took a more liberal approach to this topic because I always do. Um, <laughs> I wanted to talk about types of birth. I got rid of the re. So I thought that I had, I had an in a few interesting points on this, and I thought I wanted to bring them up. So first off, there's an interesting type of childbirth called the lotus birth. And basically what they do is they deliver the baby... And then the placenta, and then they leave them attached. They don't cut the umbilical cord. They leave them together outside of the womb, and they, like, keep the placenta warm, just like the baby and everything like that. And they just wait for it to fall off. The huh. idea is this is a natural way to do it. And it's, first off, no, it's not. No, other great apes eat the placenta. That's the way to go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's rich in iron. <laughs> um and there's no evidence to suggest it's any better. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, that's, <laughs> that's one weird thing I thought. Well, that's, that's interesting because, um, <clears throat> Mackie, you and I took a first aid and CPR course. Yep. And they told us if you ever deliver a baby to tie off the cord. Yeah, because it can actually, it can cause, um, toxicity. Yeah, exactly. Septic, toxicity. septic shock. It, it, Exactly. Yeah, it can it can become easily infected because it does contain all that blood. Yeah, and uh, you know it starts. It's not being supported anymore, so it starts breaking down. It's got toxic byproducts, and then you don't want those in your baby. So this seems like if anything, worse, it would be dangerous. Yeah. It's dangerous, and it is just stupid, evidenceless, completely misunderstanding every point. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's fun to fun to gawk at. <laughs> all right, now here's one that's close to our hearts. You and me watched Penn and Teller's BS. This is a children's show. We can't say not really a children's <laughs> show. What is this? Family friendly. Wholesome. 
wholesome indeed yes so it's bs and you can extrapolate that to to your will um the, the, one of their final episodes was based on uh dolphins and the uh the bs around dolphins and one of the segments on their show was about uh dolphin assisted births so i thought i'd do a checkup for this episode on on how that's going and um they're a little further along than they were last time. So in the show, you may remember that they had um, they had not ever done a dolphin-assisted birth, and that's still true. Ah, that's um, good. Yeah, that is good. Uh, but the uh, they have gotten closer in that what they'll do is they introduce the prospective parents to dolphin, a pod of dolphins, and then they do an ocean birth. So it's like a water birth, but in the ocean, that's... which is super dangerous. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you shouldn't do that. That's very, you're very liable to get infections. Anything could go wrong. I mean, a shark could snatch your baby. Unlikely. I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> this is well, way the, worse. The ocean is full of things that are crafted by evolution to kill. Yeah. It's, it's either empty or dangerous. That's the, that's the ocean in a sentence. Yeah. Um, but yeah, here's, here's a segment from the, uh, the same institute that, uh, from the show, the serious institute from their website. Children born in the water with the dolphins develop six months faster over uh, their first six six months faster over their first six months. Okay, so uh, they they develop a year ahead basically in their first six uh, months. In their first six months, and they have a hundred and perhaps a hundred and fifty grams more brain weight, and they are ambidextrous. <laughs> <laughs> so first off, they've never done it, so they can't know that. Um, <laughs> But yeah, the idea here is there's a psychic connection to the dolphin pod they met earlier, oh, yeah. and that helps the birth. So that's a that's a quite interesting way to give birth. They've Dangerous. moved on from birth, like isolated birth claims, and they're now on to like lasting effects. Yeah, it's not just the birth is better, but your yeah. child is better because of it. Yeah, which is absolutely ridiculous. There's no evidence. They've never done it, and there's no evidence to suggest that would. There's no viable mechanism for which that would happen. Well, I don't are understand. you saying that psychic connection isn't a viable mechanism? <laughs> well, no, I'm not. Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So the thing is, people like have this idea that dolphins are these nice things, but they're really mean. Dolphins have a nice smiley face, but they they're the only other creature but us. That will kill each other for sport, <laughs> not because there's not because there's a scarcity of food, but just because they don't like them and they want them to die. <laughs> there's no, there's no like uh, quarrel over space. It's just I hate you, die. Oh, wow, they're mean things. I don't, you know, like why, why would you, why would you want them to help you? And like they kill people all the time. Really, they they kill as many people as sharks. And yeah. you never hear anything about dolphins. <laughs> no, you don't hear about that because, well, dolphins are nice, right? <laughs> they should give Dolphin Week on Discovery Channel. I hate Shark Week. Yeah, I'm going to say it right now. You don't need a whole week for sharks. Come on, people. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, um, anyway, so next one, family water births. Same as a water birth, but every member of parents and children have to be in the same small tub while giving the birth. Why? Yeah, it's a New Age Christian hybrid tradition. <laughs> Yeah, so this is done by generally young Christian radicals, and it's sort of like a family gathering, new child kind of gizmo, you know? <laughs> you, you get a birthing and a baptism all in one. Oh, there you go. Not bad, not bad. They're Maybe just economical. With holy water. Yeah, this is, gonna, this is, this is the way to go. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was really creepy and weird. Yeah, that's weird. you know, like, not, not just a baby comes out. You know, blood, placenta, gross, nasty stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Not to uh, mention then, that children are in the same pool with their half naked mother and Oh well, um, that's just generally inappropriate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh there's also um the the final most relevant point, uh the rebirth ceremony, which is an ancient African tradition, not well documented, so I'm just going on hearsay here. But uh the idea is once a child is three months of age, then they have to have a party and slaughter a goat. The idea here is to not get attached to the child until it is reborn because the infant mortality rate was so high. Huh. So once you're through three months, it's sort of like, oh, okay, well, that's probation. Now you can get attached to the child. That's that's kind of a good psychological yeah. tactic. It's actually not bad. No, it's it's kind of funny. But uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. And I mean, slaughtering goats is fun and all. You get a good meal out of that. So <laughs> that's not so weird. But yeah, kind of interesting. So that's 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 the most relevant I could be. All right. <laughs> So I'd like to talk about the renewal and sort of rebirth that our bodies undergo. 
And our bodies are continually renewed as our cells die and they're replaced by new cells. And in this way, our organs are entirely reborn over a given length of time as all the cells that are present, say, now, they'll eventually be gone and be replaced in the future, say, you know, two years down the line, you could have an entirely different organ. It's kind of like the old um, philosophical thought experiment about, you know, you have a ship and some of the boards start decaying, so you replace the boards composing the ship and you continue doing that until you've replaced all of the original boards. You essentially have a new and different ship. It's the same with your organs. You essentially have a new and different organ once all those cells have died and been replaced. But depending on the organ or the tissue, the cells are exposed to different stresses and have different functions, and therefore they last varying lengths of time. So there was a a bunch of studies, actually, that came back with all of these different time frames. So these are like what? Like measuring like the half-life, basically, of cells? What is this? Yeah, it's basically how long um, how long it is before you have an essentially new organ. Okay, so you, you so they, they what they do is they what like measure how lo- quickly one cell or a few cells decay and then they extrapolate, or are they like measuring the whole? They actually found a. I didn't look too hard into the methods, but they uh, found a way to do it with carbon fourteen. It's like when a cell is first uh, differentiates, it starts incorporating carbon fourteen, or when it first oh, divides, and then clever. they somehow measure the carbon fourteen in it. Okay, so yeah, it is half-life then. Yeah, basically. So, uh, rib muscle cells will last about 15 years. So, 15 years, you got a new rib muscle cell. Obviously, that'll change depending on the stresses you put it under and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Injuries and whatnot. Exactly. Uh, Epithelial cells lining the GI tract. So, that's, you know, your uh, esophagus, your stomach, your intestines. They'll last about five days. Wow. Yeah, because of pH and mechanical stresses and enzymes and all that stuff. Oh, it totally makes sense. You know, you shed your skin on the exterior of your body, right? Yep, I'll get to that. I'll get to that soon. Oh, okay, well, well, there you go. Um, Red blood cells last for about 120 days or four months, so it's still fairly short. Uh, Our outer skin is recycled every two weeks, so every two weeks you've got a new skin. Uh. The liver is replaced every 300 to 500 days. So, you know... The whole liver? Yeah. Wow. Just over a year. Because so, the liver isn't responsible for uh, detoxification. And uh, so it has a lot of stresses on it, a lot of oxidation stresses all, and stuff All right. Like well, that. well I, have a, I have a question then. Uh, like, if you were to say, if you were like, uh, you drank heavily, for instance, say in your 20s. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you were, like, in your 30s, would there be any lasting liver damage? I don't know, for sure. Okay, so I didn't know if you knew. I just thought that would be interesting. There could be lasting effects if you're doing chronic damage like that. Uh, okay, yeah, I was, just, I was curious, because like, if that is the case, then, wow, that's probably the best thing to abuse. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I don't know enough about that to be comfortable Fair speaking enough. on it. Um yeah. The bones of the skeleton are replaced every 10 years, and that's a constant turnover. Your bones are, it's quite active uh, how fast they're turning over. Yeah, that's interesting, too, because, you know, bones seem like such a structural thing. Yeah, exactly. You're not going to move. They they will not be moved or touched. They are bone, and they are stone, and that's the core of your body. But uh, they're much more living than people assume. Exactly. And uh, in fact, you know, you see that when you talk about, you you know, have a bone break, and then it heals. So that gives you an idea of how long it takes bones to turn over. That's a good point, yeah. Yeah. At present, there are some cells which are thought to last a lifetime and are not replaced or are replaced very, very slowly. And these are typically the Cerebral cortex neurons, so the the neurons in your brain that are on the surface of the brain. Uh, we find that some of the interior neurons and stuff like that, I won't go into brain structures, but some of them uh, regenerate and turn over, you know, fairly frequently. Uh, it was not long ago that we thought that the brain was totally immutable. If you lost a chunk of your brain, it was gone forever. That's not necessarily the case. It depends on... So it, it is possible that these these findings where you're saying that they, they're thought to last a lifetime may not be the case forever. Correct. Um, okay. Also cells, uh, heart muscle cells, 
They mm-hmm. are thought to be replaced very, very slowly. And uh, the inner lens cells of the eye. You know, that's like all of the most vital stuff, you know? <laughs> well, it's yeah, it's the stuff that has the most stresses on it and stuff like that. So that's the essential rebirth of your body. Every, you know, you find what lasts the longest and you say, say you know, 10 years, I think, was uh, yeah. the longest there. Oh, 15 years for your muscles. So you could say every 15 years, you've, you're you essentially a new person. All of the cells in your body have turned over. My, minus the brain. and Minus the brain and those things, yeah. Yeah, so, um, okay, well, that's cool. I, uh, that, that's Those are some interesting uh, uh, trivia. Yeah. Those are uh, some good facts, or are they factoids? No, okay. <laughs> All right, well, anyway, uh, I was going to talk about the Phoenix legend. You know, Phoenix, they they burn up, and then they, they from the ashes of the dead, they a new phoenix or rather the same phoenix is reborn Mm -hmm. not as interesting as you might expect (laughs) honestly (laughs) like it's everything you know everything you think you know it's about it uh i mean there's some there's some cool stuff about um like there's there's thoughts about where it originates from whether it's from ancient egypt where that was the solar bird or whether it was greek and uh you know we know for a fact it came from greece but it may have had earlier origins in Egypt, but some of the myths are not quite, they don't quite fit together very well. I heard it was so, Egyptian, actually. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you, you, it may be Egyptian. It may not be. Um, but regardless, the, the the idea of the bird is it's a big red bird. It's, uh, it may or may not be on fire, depending on how, uh, how you interpret the legend. Uh, <laughs> usually not. Um but yeah, the uh, the idea is it's a long lasting bird, and every time it dies, it it turns to ash, and then the burning ashes turn into a new bird. And um, the uh, I think the cool thing here is the etymology, which is the generally the the t- term phoenix comes from the idea of um, a royal bird. So basically, it means royal bird mm-hmm. or purple bird. And I think that's the interesting part because phoenixes, in my mind, are always seen to be you know an orange red. Yeah. But uh, according to the etymology, it's really referring to a, a kind of a royal bird. And, you know, royal purple is a classic royal color. Mm-hmm. And it's really supposed to be more of a purplish red color. Huh. So so when you imagine it, you know, maybe maybe try again with the color. <laughs> but, <laughs> the yeah, that's that's really, a, you know, there's some minor points on phoenixes. And if you're really interested, check it out. But um, phoenixes aren't actually as cool as you might think. <laughs> that's too bad. I'm a little disappointed. In... Yeah, me too. I was really severely disappointed too. I was hoping to get some good trivia, but I guess not. <laughs> you got to mention it though. It's rebirth. Of course. It's like you said, the most iconic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like a rebirth uh, uh, symbol. For sure. Um, I'd like to talk about, similar to my last topic, uh, the recycling of atoms. So just as our organs are steadily replaced by cellular turnover, the atoms in those very cells are also replaced. As new proteins are built, used, and break, some of the atoms are reborn as new proteins, and some are excreted as waste into the environment. The only structure in the cell that doesn't really undergo atomic turnover is DNA. So... You know, all of the membranes in your cells, everything that does work in your cells is replaced. The atoms themselves are replaced as the proteins turn over. Mm -hmm. So, again, your body is changing all the time. But this atomic rebirth proceeds not only on these microscopic scales, but also on cosmic scales. Because all the elements that are heavier than lithium, so, you know, everything except uh, hydrogen, helium, and lithium... All those elements were forged in fusion reactions of stars or in the supernovae that ended their lives. Uh, When a star undergoes nova or supernova, the elements composing the star are strewn for millions of light years. And eventually those elements are later drawn together by gravity to form another generation of star systems. Our solar system, in fact, is the result of this atomic recycling process. And we know this because we and our planet are composed of heavy elements, right? Yeah. We live on a rocky planet. We uh, live in a star system that has elements that are heavier than lithium. Uh, And so we must be from at least a second generation uh, star that might be 
a single very very large star that yeah, provided so the, everything that, that means that our sun is the leftovers from a second sun so we're we're in the third generation now uh potentially yes so <clears throat> this is why Carl Sagan famously said the nitrogen in our DNA, the calcium in our teeth, the iron in our blood, and the carbon in our apple pies were made in the interiors of collapsing stars. We are made of star stuff. What was he on about with apple pies? He loved that stuff. <laughs> he was appealing to the Americans. Ah, okay. okay. He hardly ever mentions baseball, which is why I was wondering. Mm. So anyway, <laughs> yeah. And just to put this in a little bit of perspective, when our sun runs out of fuel, it too will be recycled and perhaps will help to fuel new star systems and new life forms in the distant, distant future. You think it will? If it, undergo if it undergoes Nova. I'm going to say Which yes. it will. Okay, cool. That's nice. I just assumed it'd be out of fuel by now. <laughs> uh, anyway, so, um, yeah, I'm going to talk about the immortal jellyfish. You've probably heard about this. I have. Yeah, I mean, Think. and the audience as well. You know, you, you this was a, a big, like, uh, science news story just not long ago. Mm -hmm. By not long ago, I mean, like, probably every year for the last five years. <laughs> <laughs> so the, uh, the uh, Turritopsis nutricula. Do you think that's how it said? Turritopsis nutricula. Nutricula. That sounds right. All right, cool. Look at that. Pronunciation college. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, it's the immortal jellyfish. It's uh, renowned in trivia and thought experiments. So the idea is um, that this jellyfish has the ability to renew itself. Every time it gets too old or decrepit, it can turn back a stage. It can go back to a time when it wasn't sexually mature, turns into a polyp, which all jellyfish start their life out as. Uh, basically, it'll invert its bell. You know, like a jellyfish has got that big bell on top of it. It yeah. inverts that, turn, uh, and it sucks back its tentacles and reabsorbs them. And then it goes and it attaches to something and becomes a polyp and starts being like a normal, like, filter feeder again. <laughs> uh, and they... Um, Thing is, though, uh, they're not actually very, very immortal. The idea is they're biologically immortal. They're not immortal. They can be killed. They just don't, when they age, they can go back and stop their aging from happening, right? right. So, uh, as far as we can tell, they don't actually last that long. Well, in like, nature. The yeah, theoretically, they could last forever, but they're key components to predators you know they, they mm -hmm. they're key prey right so they're eaten all the time and they uh they die to disease a lot so uh we Man, don't how know. annoying would that be <laughs> what you mean like being immortal but not imagine very long imagine yeah imagine if you were like oh i have the potential to live forever and then you just get like in a Except car accident or something day, you know yeah. it's like you know if someone gets in a car accident or something nowadays it's like well they were going to die anyways at some point. It's like, no, these things could maybe have lived forever. Yeah, yeah. And they, well, see, the thing is, they don't have the minds to regret it. So I think I don't feel so bad for them. That's true. <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, we, we can't really measure how long they last in the wild because you can't tag a jellyfish. Ah. There's no way to track an individual jellyfish, right? So we just got to estimate. Mm. And we don't have a good estimate. <laughs> so we don't know how long they last, but they could last forever is the point. Um, but yeah, those who, uh, I think um, the great thing about these jellyfish is it's inspired a lot of scientists to look into how it works and how it could maybe help us figure out how to make humans last longer or reverse aging, for instance. That would be awesome. Yeah, and you know what? A lot of there's a range of success for a lot of these projects, but uh, it actually looks pretty promising. Really? Yeah, I think I want to do another show on it though, based on what I've seen. So let's not talk about it now. But regardless, aging may not be a problem for very long. <laughs> oh, that would be so great. So, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, do you think it's actually immortality, though? Because basically what it's doing is it's it's akin to us turning back to a baby and then regrowing. Do you think that's immor immortal? Well, this pulls in a lot of stuff about identity. For sure. Do I don't know. It's, it's hard to extrapolate from... A Just jellyfish. a jellyfish. If I yeah. still had the same mind, then yeah, sure. Yeah, well, okay. What if you had, you know, the same same DNA, you had the same 
conditions you just didn't have your memories anymore you were a baby oh, that's that's real right. hard <laughs> yeah i don't know about that I, I i don't think we can really come to a good answer on that one but uh yeah. <laughs> but yeah I, I, uh, another real quick one uh the hydra is another type of uh, aquatic creature it's a a nidarian uh, a nidarian why can't i say words uh and it's a sessile predator mm -hmm. so uh it's claimed to be immortal since it does not age yeah, it doesn't it just, have to go back. It just doesn't age. It just doesn't age. So oh, that's that's, that's a little it's a step further, and that's the key to the research at this point as well, because mm. that that can actually be pretty easily applied to us. They're very they're fairly related, <laughs> you know, Nidarians. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're more related than jellyfish, actually. Well, not a well, lot, I mean, but <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you know, they're still little horrible creatures. Yeah, they're not like a, a dog. <laughs> anyway yeah so i guess that's the end of that uh you want to go to the games now absolutely all right great all right welcome to our game section so, Mackie, if you were reincarnated as an animal, which animal would you like it to be? Human, no doubt. All right, non-human, non-human. Ah, animal. all right. How about an? Well, I don't know. Great apes kind of have it bad if they're not human. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, okay, I think probably I'd want to be uh, a jellyfish. <laughs> <laughs> an immortal jellyfish. No. Uh, well, we'll see. Uh, can, can I keep my my memories? No. All right. Well, then this is useless anyway. I'll be a cat. They haven't got a lazy life. All right. That's a good, that's right, a good answer. Cool. <laughs> How about you? Hmm. I think I would want to be... Yeah, domesticated animals do well. Yeah. It depends on the domesticated animal. Yeah. Domesticated cows tend to have it rough. Yeah. Well, I mean, cats, depending on the owner, have it rough. Oh, that's true, too. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Let's go for something random. Be a hamster. Eh... It's a short. It's a short investment. You can come back later. Is another thing. It's in a couple of years, and you're done. <laughs> oh, how about how about like a like a parrot or like a Galapagos tortoise or something? Something That's that lives stupid. really long. Yeah. Why would you want to live long? As you could. Ugh, you're terrible. That would be cool. You, yeah. No. But think about it. If you could come back as an animal, like for a couple of years, then you could come back as a human later. But but what if you could only do it once? Oh, that's well. I just, I guess I'm extrapolating rules. I don't know. Um, you fool! Never extrapolate rules. I always do. That's that's what I do. That's I my job. <laughs> um, I, I I'm gonna stick with Hevscat. I I think they got it best. Fair enough. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, so now we'll move on to our five minute challenge. So every week, either Mackie challenges me or I challenge him to learn as much as possible about a topic. And you get to do five minutes of research on it. So mm -hmm. last week, I challenged Mackie to learn as much as possible about Argyle. So yes. Mackie, what you got? All right. Well, Argyle. So um, it is a pattern. So it's not a type of fabric, but a pattern made with overlaying half points of diamonds, diamond outlines overlaid on top of filled diamond checkerboard pattern. Mm -hmm. So... Um, it became popular after World War One. The Argyle pattern is made from intarsia technique. I'm not sure what that is. I didn't have time for that. Do you have anything more on that? Uh, it's a knitting technique, I believe. Okay, well, and it's sometimes it's woven. Yeah. Or as I've written here, swoven. <laughs> <laughs> There's um, sports teams sometimes have the pattern. Uh, the Garmin Slipstream Cycling Team, nicknamed the Argyle Armada, mm -hmm. and uh, the Norwegian Men's Curling Team in the 2010 Olympics. And that's all I got. All right. Uh, I got a couple things to add. Okay. Uh, it's usually an overlay of intercrossing diagonal lines over top of solid diamonds. It's just yep. a pattern. It's derived from the tartan of Clan Campbell of Argyll in West Scotland. Oh, that's interesting. And it was originally used in kilts and socks. And uh, just as a sort of aside, when you say tartan, that's what most people think plaid at. Is. Yes, a plaid is a is the uh, the what is it the the sort of uh, what is it a banner type thing that goes around a person? And yeah, then the, uh, and then the pattern itself that you think of as plaid is called tartan. Yes, because the banners are the the plaid is always tartan. Yes, so people have conflated the terms. Yes, 
All right. Uh, <laughs> and it was used as golfware in uh, the U.S. and England when it got popular. That's where. It, that's why it got popular. The most interesting thing I learned from this, however, was that the uh, diamond shape with the long edge pointing up, sort of if you think of a diamond pointing upwards, yep. is also called a lozenge. Hmm. Why? Yeah. I don't know. But that's just oh. another name for a diamond shape oh, okay. is a lozenge, oh. as in oh. the things you put in your mouth when you've got a cold. You were always into geometry. I I do love geometry. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now you got a quiz for me. What is it? I have a quiz, and this quiz is all about rebirth. I haven't given it a pithy title. but Oh, you know what? Oh, give it a pithy, pithy title. Uh, well, you think about that, I've got to say uh, we are going to do, continue the challenges next season. But since this is a season finale, we are not going to carry the challenges beyond that. Just just to warn everybody. Okay. I still don't have a pithy title, but uh, whatever. I give you so much time. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right. All right. So uh, this quiz is basically just centered around rebirth. Okay. All of these questions are sort of standalone, so there's no uh, formula. Okay. So number one. This show has been canceled three times and resurrected twice. The first episode after its second renewal was titled Rebirth. What show is this? Oh, come on. This is Futurama. This is Futurama. I had to allude to it. Uh, <laughs> you did. The title. Because of the title. Yeah. <clears throat> Number two, I, I will note that I wrote this quiz before uh, Mackie did his research, all mm -hmm. his uh, topics, so this is an easy one. This mythical creature has been associated with rebirth for thousands of years and has become a modern-day symbol for resurrection. It's traditionally reborn from its own ashes. Jesus. No. The <laughs> Phoenix, right. Yes. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, what am I, two for two then? Yep. All right. This this is when it gets hard. This superhero compares his escape from captivity to the rebirth of the Phoenix as he is reborn as his super alter ego. Super alter ego? As in the superhero alter ego. Oh. Oh. Flash. Nope. Oh, okay. Who is it? It is Iron Man. What? Oh, that totally makes sense. I should have gotten that. That's my favorite superhero. Yeah. And I just I in saw the second movie. He refers to himself as a personification of the Phoenix metaphor. Oh, he does, doesn't he? He does. All right, I'm terrible. I just I when I was doing my research, I found um that the, there was a Flash comic titled Rebirth. So ah, I see. I was going off of that. <laughs> All right, uh, what do you got? This character is the protagonist of a summer blockbuster saga. And in one installment of this saga, uh, the character dies and is sent to a version of the Underworld. And in the next uh, installment, he's rescued and retrieved from this Underworld. What is this character? Oh, God. Wow. Um, I don't know. A summer blockbuster? This is a suit. I can't. I don't know. Is this a superhero movie, you said? I didn't say it was a superhero movie. What did you say? I said it was a summer blockbuster saga. So oh, it's got saga. multiple installments. Oh, God. If you need I... help, it currently has four parts. Wow. I have no idea. Yeah, I had to Am take I... out a lot of specifics because it would give it away. Yeah. Uh, all right, I'll give you some hints and see how this goes. <laughs> all right. Uh, when this character dies... He's eaten by a big monster. Pinocchio. Nope. All right, I'll give you another one. <laughs> uh, the place he is sent to is called The Locker. Oh, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, and this is... Uh, this is Pirates of the Caribbean, right? I got this, right? I am waiting for the answer to the character name. Oh, I, I don't know. It's the guy. It's the main character that's not Johnny Depp. <laughs> right? I'm, no, I'm no, it for, was Johnny Depp. I'm waiting for it was uh, Captain Jack Sparrow. Captain Jack Sparrow is correct. Ah, okay, so it wasn't. I thought it, the the locker thing. Okay, we're good. All right. <clears throat> oh, I kind of got that one, I guess. <laughs> so to say that again, the this character is the protagonist of the Pirates of the Caribbean summer blockbuster saga, featuring uh, an installment, i.e., Dead Man's Chest, in which the character dies and is sent to Davy Jones' locker, and subsequently rescued in At World's End. And the character is Captain Jack Sparrow. Uh, All right. This term refers to rebirth in a video game. Oh, um, really? 
that that's all yep rebirth uh respawning respawn that's correct all right this film uh features a news meteorologist who's trapped living the same resented day over and over until he Groundhog takes... Day. Yes, Groundhog Day. With, well, well, yeah. Uh, I'll finish the question. Uh, yep. Same resented day over and over until he takes advantage of the time and steals the heart of the love interest. And the movie <laughs> is Groundhog Day. Uh, all right. This Parkid character dies in nearly every episode of this TV series and is reborn by the next episode. That's uh, Kenny from South Park. That's correct. All right. Look at me. I'm doing great. This is an easy quiz. I thought it would be harder. All right. <laughs> uh, this director was responsible for the gritty, wildly successful reboot of a previously campy superhero series. Wait, we're looking for the director? Yep. I'm assuming this is the, the new Batman reboot, right? The most recent Batman reboot? I can't say anything. I don't know that. I don't know anything about that. I'm so bad with names of actors and directors. Ugh, you've hit my weak point. <laughs> <laughs> this is so obvious. Everybody's yelling at me right now. I yep. don't know. What is it? Tell me what it is. All right. It is the Dark Knight trilogy, and the director is Christopher Nolan. Oh, I thought that was the actor. No, that's Christian I, Bale. I never can remember the two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really bad at this. I, I can tell you that much. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I thought it was Christopher Nolan. I had that name in my head, but I thought that was the actor. Yeah. All right. All right. Carry on. Uh, <laughs> last question. Getting this item in the game series, The Legend of Zelda, meant that you would be resurrected if you were killed in battle. Oh. Oh, I should know this. I should know this a lot. Um, Game Shark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the uh, N64 <laughs> reference. Um, 90s kids will get it. Oh, God, why do you say these things? All right, uh, uh, it's got to be something magical. Yeah. Oh, it's a fairy, right? It's, it's a, non, a fairy. It's a, it's a fairy. It's a non-navi fairy. Right. All right, cool. Basically, if you die when you have a fairy in your inventory, then it pops out of the bottle and heals you up. Yes, I remember that now. Ah, oh, i got to play some Zelda. All yeah. Right. <laughs> All right, that's my rebirth quiz. Last All right. quiz of the season, what do you think? It was kind of awkward. It was everywhere. I didn't know what to do. Good. All right, cool. Throwing you off balance. Uh, yeah, you totally embarrassed me with that whole Dark Knight stuff. Good. <laughs> uh, all right, so that's our show. Uh, email comments, questions, and corrections to mindtheapposts at gmail.com. The next show will be in season two, uh, a week from now, right? A week? No, two weeks from now. Two weeks we're going to have now. one week off. Right? right, one week off. And it will be called Greater Than or Equal to Six. Subscribe to us on YouTube, iTunes, or the podcast feed of your choice, and be sure to like or rate us depending on your platform. Thanks for listening, and uh, Mind the Gap will be reborn next season. Move over, God! Prepare for rebirth! Ooh. Oh, wrong switch!